Hi, this is Luke with The Gamer, and this is a guide to playing Survivor in Evil Dead The Game. Survivors are the protagonists of Evil Dead The Game. As a survivor, you'll join a team of three other players in an attempt to banish the Kandarian demon terrorizing the area. If the group doesn't work together, they will fall either by letting the timer run out or by falling in the battle against the forces of evil. A single survivor who knows what they're doing can rescue a match that's going poorly, sometimes even snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. By following these tips, you'll become a better player and a better teammate, resulting in more match wins. Just because you've found an item doesn't mean you should take it for yourself right away. Always consider whether a new find would be better served in the hands of another player. For example, if you find a can of Shemp's Cola and already have one in reserve, take a quick peek at your team's health. If someone else is in rough shape, mark the Shemp's for them and let them have it. The same goes for weapons. A snazzy epic meat hammer is great for anyone, but it'll be best in the hands of a warrior or Kelly who gets a bonus with that weapon type. So always consider the needs of the team and you'll be better equipped to face the darkness. Placing markers is essential for quickly locating the three map pieces. This first objective can be the hardest for new players, since the team is only given a hint as to which area to search. By marking the noted location, you can give players unfamiliar with the map a much needed waypoint and reduce unnecessary running around. At the beginning of a match, the survivors have a limited amount of time to collect the lost pages in the Kandarian Dagger. Failure to do so before the clock runs out results in a victory for the demon. However, once the artifacts are in the survivors' hands, the timer stops giving them time to prepare for the final battle. Just because you're no longer on a time limit doesn't mean you should dawdle though. The demon will continue to level up the longer you wait, so aside from making sure everyone is healed up and maybe ransacking one last building, you should plan to head straight for the dark ones and finish the match. We've all been there. One minute Scotty's cracking his usual jokes, the next minute his eyes have rolled into the back of his head and he's screamed about how he's going to swallow your soul. A survivor whose fear levels get out of control can be possessed by the demon, forcing them to waste ammo, leave the group, or even attack their teammates. A possessed survivor will glow bright red, so there's never any question about who's driving. Attacking a possessed teammate is the quickest way to drive the demon out, as damage dealt to the survivor will transfer to the demon. Quickly exercising a possessed teammate can be beneficial in the long run, as afterwards the demon will be low on infernal energy and be forced to give you a reprieve while they recharge. Ideally, if a survivor is taken down by the demonic hordes, a teammate can revive them before they bleed to death. That doesn't always pan out though. A clever demon will do everything they can to ensure the survivor's demise. Death is not the end for survivors though. If a survivor reaches a teammate's corpse, they can collect their soul and bring it to a nearby ritual altar, indicated by icons like this on your minimap. Once there, the soul carrier needs to perform a ritual to resurrect their teammate. This ritual takes time and it can be interrupted by taking damage or other attacks from the demon, so it's a good idea to have someone there to cover them while they attempt this. Each character has a unique ability that can provide significant advantages. These abilities should be used as often as makes sense. They have a lengthy cooldown so you'll always want to be sure that you use your ability when it'll do the most good. Take for example the Evil Dead 2 version of Ash that's classed as a hunter. His ability allows him to instantly rescue a survivor from possession and force the demon away. Or Cheryl who can put down a device that creates an area of healing. When using these abilities make sure you're timing them perfectly to get the most out of it. The final step before activating the Necronomicon is to use the Kandarian Dagger to destroy the Dark Ones guarding it. Each player can simultaneously use a dagger to damage the Dark Ones but somebody needs to keep a lookout for deadites, because the demon will be coming in guns blazing any second. Try to have leaders and hunters attack the Dark Ones while warriors and supports battle the oncoming horde. Group around the party's leader for their aura effect and watch out for the Dark Ones fireballs. This might take slightly longer than having the whole team blasting away at the hooded figures, but it's much safer as it prevents the demon from making too much progress before the final battle. So that's a guide to playing Survivor in Evil Dead the game. I hope this guide helps you in your battle against the Kandarian demons and check out thegamer.com for more.